Okay, so in today's video, we are going to be preparing some bis triphenylphosphine cobalt chloride and also hopefully some bis triphenylphosphine cobalt bromide. Now, this project was recommended to me by Oliver's Complexes, link in the description, and it wouldn't be possible to do this project without the triphenylphosphine supplied by Tom's Lab, link also in the description. So, currently, I don't actually have any cobalt. Uh, bromide which we need for this reaction so I'm gonna have to make some hydrobromic acid and then uh, use that to make the cobalt bromide but I won't be showing any of that we'll just be showing the synthesis of the um, bis triphenylphosphine complexes so let's get on to it okay we're gonna start with the bis triphenylphosphine cobalt chloride complex and to do this we're gonna use two grams of cobalt chloride hexahydrate and four grams of the triphenylphosphine and we're going to dissolve the triphenylphosphine starting in 30 mils of isopropyl alcohol. Okay, so I've added the triphenylphosphine to a jointed Erlenmeyer with the 30 mils of isopropanol. And I've now set that up for reflux with stirring. And we're going to heat it up and reflux it till it all dissolves. The triphenylphosphine is now all dissolved, so now I'm going to add 2 grams of cobalt chloride hexahydrate. This is a slight excess, but uh, you know, I want to conserve the triphenylphosphine as much as possible. Alright, in it goes. Now we're going to stick the reflux condenser back on and continue refluxing for around 20 minutes. You may already be able to see some of the precipitate forming. Or precipitate. Looks to be a nice blue color. As expected. Alright, it's now been refluxing for 15 minutes. I'm going to turn off the heating and allow it to start to cool. So once it stops refluxing, I'll take it off the heat and allow it to sit for 15 minutes. And then I'm going to filter off the precip uh, precipitate, which should be our product. I've taken it off heating and I'm going to let it cool down to room temperature before filtering it. And you can see it's a very nice blue color. It's actually a lot darker blue in person. Uh, the camera kind of washes it out. Almost a more purple color. But the pre uh, precipitate is definitely a very blue. Though this solution up here is more purple. Okay, the product seems to have caked in the bottom. So when I stir it, you see it doesn't actually all come out actually. Okay, no, it is coming. There we go. It's not quite room temperature, but I'm going to filter it now. So let's get that done. And then after, I'll wash it with a bit of ice-cold isopropanol. Hopefully not too much of this makes it through this coffee filter. No, it looks good. Okay. Okay, now we're going to make the bis triphenylphosphine cobalt bromide complex. Uh, like before, we have 30 mils of isopropanol. This time we have 3.5 grams of triphenylphosphine and 1.6 grams of cobalt bromide. So let's get this dissolving and refluxing, and then we'll add the cobalt bromide to it. The triphenylphosphine is now dissolved, so I'm going to dump in the anhydrous co cobalt bromide. You should see a nice color change happen. And then I'll throw the condenser back on. Very emerald green precipitate. And then I'll let that reflux for 20 minutes.
Okay, the complex has been sitting now, it's cooled down, and now I'm gonna filter it. And wash it. I've adjusted the colors. They really don't look that good. It's a very green color. But the camera doesn't do a good job of picking it up. Here's a side-by-side -side of the two compounds. In my hand I have the chloride complex and in, on the paper is the bromide complex. It still looks a bit blue on the camera or in the video, uh, but it is an emerald green color in real life. The camera just doesn't pick it up very well, but you can see the difference in colors here. So that's the synthesis of bis triphenylphosphine cobalt chloride and bromide. So thanks for watching. Make sure to go check out those channels I linked in the description and see you guys in the next video.